Okay, can you hear me okay? How is the volume, Susan? Is that good or too loud? Does that work? Is that too loud? Okay.
Welcome to Faith United Church of Christ. We're delighted that you have joined us for worship this morning. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are indeed welcome here. I would also like to take an opportunity to, to invite all of you to enjoy uh, join us immediately following worship downstairs in Fellowship Hall for a time of um, fellowship and enjoying coffee. <laughs> So let us worship. Call to worship today. I will speak the uh, unbolded and you will speak the bolded. A gift of a new day. A new day with surprising miracles. Kindness to be shared. A gift of a new day. Let us receive it with joy. To him, I sing the mighty power of God. Let us rise and sing. Say the prayer of confession as we stay risen. God and love and justice, we long for peace within and peace without. We long for harmony in our families and with our friends, for serenity in midst of struggles, and for commitment to each other's growth. We long for the time when wherever we are, there will be a dwelling place for your love. Yet we confess that we are often anxious. We do not trust each other fully, and we too often harbor ill will. We shy away from the risks and from the hard choices that love incurs. Look upon us with kindness and grace, and show us how to walk in your paths through the mercy of our Savior. Amen. 
Scripture tells us that the mercy and the love of God are endless. God's wrath is slow and God's love is eternal. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us turn and share that peace with one another. Peace. The scripture reading today is from King James the first, 17 to 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change in fulfillment of his own purpose he gave us at birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would like to invite the children to come and join me up here on the steps. Good morning. <laughs> morning. Good morning, <laughs> and good morning to you. <laughs> All right. Well, this morning in my sermon, I'm gonna be talking about love. And I found this wonderful little book. It's called Slug and Snail, Search for Love. So here we have a slug and a snail. And they're very good friends. And they're looking for love. Wonder what they can find. Can you see the pictures here? 
So what is love, wonders live wise slug? Is it always the same for each creature or bug? <laughs> what do you think? You think it's the same for everybody? <laughs> Does a kiss show love? Is a hug what we do? Or is love like the friendship I have with you? They're talking to each other, wondering. It is, says Snail, but it's so much more. Let's go, dear friend. It's time to explore. <laughs> oh, I wonder where they're going to explore. Now, sea otters hold paws so they can't drift away. There they are, right there. That's how they care in their own otter way. Well, we can't hold paws, that's certainly true. But together we crawl, that's just what we do. So slug and nail are, snail are crawling along together. Now koalas will hug in furry arm poses, poses. They cuddle in trees with and kiss with soft noses. Is this a friend or is this a foe? Touching a nose helps koalas to know. Well, we don't have noses to touch or to kiss. But when we're apart, you're a friend who I'd miss, says Snail and Slug. Ooh, what have we got here? Bats comb their fur. It's how they cleanse. They'll even groom their family and friends. We don't have fur to groom one another, but I love you like you're my very own brother. Snail and slug. See, there's the bat and there's snail and slug. Dolphins converse with a whistle or click. They care for each other when they're hurt or sick. Well, if you're not well, I'll be there for you. That's because our friendship is true. You ever seen a dolphin? No? Well, I hope you do someday. <laughs> I hope you get to see one someday. They were really interesting. Soon, the friends see wolf pups in a glen. They play tug of war again and again. A wolf pack is big, from three wolves to 20. They hunt, hunt for food, so the pack will have plenty. I'll look for worms, and you can too. Each one I find, I'll share with you, say snail and slug. So you see the wolves, and they're slug and snail again, sharing the worm. Sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> These two white geese are partners, you know. Where one of them travels, the other will go. We may not be partners, but you're my dear friend. We'll travel together from now till the end. There's slug and snail promising to travel together and there's the big white geese. You keep your eyes open this fall, you might be lucky enough to see some flying overhead. The penguin chick has two dads, not one. They're kind and loving 
and so much fun. Her daddy's care, their love is quite real. They keep her safe from a whale or a seal. It would be nice to care for a slug or baby spider or even a bug, say snail and slug to each other. You think you'd like to care for a bug? Yeah. <laughs> a kangaroo, Joey, stays in mama's pouch where it's warm and cozy, just like a plush couch. It's a comfort to have his mama close by. She soothes her Joey when he starts to cry. Well, you always soothe me when I'm feeling sad. You cheer me up and then I feel glad. Say snug, slug and snail. See the kangaroo? The pride of lions stays together, you see. They nap and cuddle like one family. We're slug and snail. We cannot cuddle, but we can create a warm little huddle. <laughs> Imagine that. There. There's the lions and there's snail and seal. Yeah. Yeah. Love is much more than just you and me. It's bigger than us. It's in all that we do. It's fine. Love is around us. It sometimes surprises. Love can appear in all shapes and sizes. Isn't that neat? So wherever you go, however you experience it, love can be all around. Okay. Shall we say a prayer? Dear God, thank you for giving us the gift of love in so many different ways, in families, in friends, and in the animals of creation we see your love shining through. Bless these children that they may grow in your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for coming up this morning. <laughs> thank you. Now, I love the poetry of the Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs, as it's also called. It doesn't appear often in the lectionary, but the Im imagery that's evoked in it may be hmm, a little X-rated for some folks, but it captures with imagination the exuberance in physical love. And I thought I would share the lectionary text for us this morning from chapter two of the Song of Solomon. Listen, it's my lover. Here he comes now, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Here he stands now outside our wall, peering through the windows, peeking through the lattices. My beloved speaks and says to me, rise up my fair one, and come away, for the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. Now, to be honest, this is most often used portion of the Song of Songs, 
and it evokes feelings that I would have recognized hmm, once upon a time. <laughs> but if you've ever been excited about the arrivals of someone you love and care about, you may be able to relate to the exuberance of this po uh, poetry and to the images that it uses. When love is young, and I'm talking about young in length of time, not of people's ages, the excitement is undoubtedly real as love grows and the anticipation of sharing a future together is imagined. Could this be the one that God is sending for me to share my life with? The interesting part of the Song of Solomon in the Bible is that God is not mentioned once in these writings, but is assumed to have been present by those who have studied it over the years. Now, some have even questioned why was this book included in the canon of scripture that was established, but its poetic imagery cannot be denied. And if we've ever been in love with someone, then it expresses wonderful feelings and experiences in a way that most of us only think or feel but don't have the words to say or to write them down. Love is a gift that God gives to us. And then I read the excerpt from the Hebrew scriptures followed, uh, as I read that excerpt and then followed it with the text that we heard read from the letter of James, I made the connection that both of these texts are expressing love both in the romantic, or we might call it the heiress kind of love for another human being, and the kind of love that Jesus calls us to express towards those with whom we're in relationship in all the parts of our lives. Both our partners with whom we share intimately and those with whom we encounter and work with every day in whatever underdate, uh, endeavors we may be undertaking. And that's called agape love. Especially James expounds on what agave love, agape love looks like when it's expressed in daily living. His emphasis is not on just hearing the word, but on doing the word as well. And this prescription, if you will, for human behavior in the New King James, uh, new RSV version of scripture begins with the word, listen. Just as the poem from the Song of Solomon also in the NRSV begins with, listen. What a gift it is to truly listen to one another, whether it's your lover, your children, your spouse, a friend, someone you're beginning to get acquainted with in a church meeting, or just hearing a sermon on Sunday morning. When love is new, we can be good listeners since we want to learn all that we can about the other. Or when we begin making friends with someone we want to know better, we listen carefully to what they might have to say and how they express themselves. But later on in life, how often do we hear the other begin to question whether we're really listening to them? I know from experience that it's easy to become like the couple in a legendary magazine cartoon. The husband is reading aloud from the newspaper. Honey, it says here that one of the reasons for marital problems is that couples don't really listen to each other. And then you look over at where the wife or the partner ought to be sitting and you see an empty chair. Turns out that she or he got up and walked out of the room some time ago, but the partner never noticed. Such are the perils of love that's no longer new. 
I know how easy it is to interrupt someone before they're finished talking and have them say, let me finish to what I was trying to say first. All too often, we're one jump ahead and not really listening, but already formulating what we're going to say next. And we might not truly hear all that is trying to be related to us. And how often do we get antsy with our children before they're finished telling us all that they have to say? James reminds us to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Don't we all want to be heard? We want to be listened to. Life can be really tedious if there should suddenly be no one around to listen to us or to care what we might have to say. Over the course of my ministry, I've had many occasions to visit with folks in a hospital or a nursing home. Patients lying in their beds, perhaps hooked up to various tubes or monitors, or maybe just recovering some, from some procedure or treatment, can often feel like there's nobody there to really listen to them. They're getting good care from nurses and doctors and others. It's just that these folks have a lot to look after and they might not have time to just stop and pay attention and listen. In nursing homes or places that provide ongoing care, it can be even more difficult to be heard when folks are shuffled around from one place to another or settled in front of a TV set and often left to their own devices. Sometimes these places are understaffed or other residents are not cognizant <laughs> enough to interact well with them. The point is that these folks are in need of another person who will just sit and listen to them. I remember years ago visiting a resident in a long-term care facility who was into dementia and it wasn't easy to know where she was at just then. But then she began to talk about a time in her life and about events that really didn't make sense to me, but I listened to her. She went on with for quite a period of time. And later on after that conversation, I found out that this lady had been a charge nurse in a hospital and was responsible for folks that served under her supervision, as well as for the doctors that she had worked with on a daily basis. When I reflected back on what I had heard from her, I realized that this lady was making a lot of sense as she relived in her mind the days when she was a very important person in keeping the hospital running well in the areas in which she was in charge. I learned a lot about her that afternoon, even though her current circumstances had so drastically changed for her. I hope that just listening to her talk made a difference to her that day, but I don't know. But it was valuable to me in what I learned about her life once I put the pieces together. Being able to really listen to one another is a precious gift that we can give and a gift that comes not from us, but from God. And it's especially important if we're visiting in hospitals or nursing homes, but even the more than that, when we're just listening to one another at home, at work, at church, wherever we gather together. James reminds us every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. We can listen to others because we've been listened to. You're, you're familiar with the words of Jesus, ask and it will be given to you, search and you will find, 
knock and the door will be open for you. One preacher reminded me that when we pray, God listens. Because God hears us, we're set free then to listen to others. Carl Rogers, the great psychologist, was an expert at listening attentively to others. He taught that waiting for others to speak, reflecting and opening a gracious space for others to share what is on their hearts is what true listening can be. Making his words more inclusive, I. Um, this is what he said. Hearing has consequences. When I truly hear a person and the meanings that are important to them at that moment, hearing not simply the words, but them, him or her, many things happen. There's first of all, a grateful look. They feel released. Almost always when a person realizes that they've been deeply heard, their eyes moisten. I think in some real sense, they are weeping for joy. It is so they were saying, thank God, somebody heard me. Somebody knows what it's like to be me. I began the sermon with the Song of Solomon, and th that book simply revels in this kind of meticulous attention, the exuberant recognition and naming of the other. The words wax eloquent and sometimes even a little strange as they pay attention to one another. If you read the book all the way through, and I encourage you to do that sometime, it can even get a little crazy in their descriptions of one another. But they also exemplify for us what love does when it pays attention to the other. In a similar way, we offer that gift of love to one another when we truly listen and carefully listen to one another. As James reminds us, let everyone be quick to listen. In these days, when we're bombarded with words, words that clamor and bang, as well as words that help and heal, sometimes we just need to stop and listen to our lovers, our children, our families, our friends, and those that we care for in many different ways. Just listening and blocking out the noise around so we can hear what is really being said to us. Perhaps that would make all the difference that might propel us out of our self-centeredness and make us become doers of the word, being the love that God has implanted in us. It can be greatly renewing for us to do that, and certainly for the one to whom we give that gift. And in that, James reminds us, we will be blessed in the doing. Amen. And now as we come to a time of... Uh, time of announcements and sharing. Are there any that would like to share with us something that's coming on or something you'd like us all to know about? Yes. Mike. Can you, yeah, can you come up to the microphone, April? Yeah, thank you. Good morning. Got it? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Some of you, most of you probably know, I don't know, maybe, 
I'll just say anyway, my name is April and next month, starting October, our Penguin Packs program will begin again. And for those of you that don't know, that is an amazing program in which we pack food every week for children that are experiencing food insecurity um, so that they can have food over the weekend. And we are hoping to get some more drivers to help us. So what that means is people that take the packs that we pack every Sunday after church, on Thursdays, we drive them to preschools. So if you are able or willing or interested to do that, please see me or Britt. Britt just disappeared. <laughs> right there. Britt is the person who coordinates packing. I coordinate the ordering from the food bank. Lois, right there is the person that contacts the preschools. Pastor Anne, right there, is the mastermind behind coordinating, but don't contact her really anymore. She's a little busy. I'm handing that over to Britt. <laughs> um, so we have all been a team, um, and we couldn't do it without everyone that helps pack every week. Um, so we get all kinds of food. It's really fun after church. It doesn't take more than a few minutes. We actually have to give people a chance to do it if you haven't done it because we have so many people that help. Um, so it's a great way to serve the community and to get to know other people in the congregation that you might not already know. So it's, it's just a wonderful program, but we do need drivers, like I said. So if you want to know more about what that means, again, please see one of us, and we thank you in advance for your help. Oh, and um, pass the mic to Britt. Thanks, April. Piggybacking on that, um, with Penguin Packs, starting the last Sunday of this month, September, is when we're gonna be upstairs packing once again. So everyone get excited. And in anticipation, um, we said last year we switched from plastic bags to these nice reusable bags. Um, but the fun thing about children is they don't always bring back the nice reusable bags. So we are always accepting donations in addition to if you wanna drive or in addition to wanting to come upstairs and help. If you just have any little drawstring bags that you want to donate. Somebody, I can't give credit because there was a bag, but no name. Somebody brought us a lot of what looks like homemade cute bags. So we got a lot of these. And then being a college town, I know we all go to conferences and they all give us these bags and we're like, another bag, what do I do with it? Now you can take it here and donate it to a good cause. So bags. And then, like I said, last Sunday of September, we're upstairs packing for the penguins. Thank you. do not have props. So, uh, <laughs> um, so just a quick reminder that kayak church will be next Sunday. Um, so if you've never been before, what we do is we meet at Bald Eagle State Park at the boat and rental facility um, at 8 a.m. bright and early uh, because um, we want to be first in line to be able to rent the watercraft. This year, we're fortunate to have received a grant from um, Penn Central Conference to fund this. So we're able to pay. I'm going to have the church credit card. I'm able, we're able, not me, we're the church and the grant is able to pay for all the rentals. So all you need to do is show up. Um, we've also rented a pavilion and we'll have some snacks and stuff for fellowship. Um, Pastor Nora Faust will be there preaching on the water. Um, so it'd be super helpful in Faith Works. Um, there's a quick little uh RSVP link, just so that I'm able to get a head count, just to get a sense of who's coming. It also gives me your email in case there's some last minute um, emergency and we need to contact you or just like weather or something, but I think your weather looks good. Um, and if you need transportation too, there's a question on there that lets us know that and we can follow up with you because uh, it is about 30 minutes away or so. So if you're a college student or you know, grad student or something and don't have transportation, um, let us know and we don't want that to be a hurdle for your participation. If going out 
that far away on the water is not your thing. Um, Pastor Ann will be holding down the fort here as well. We'll have our normal 1045 service. Um, so feel free to, uh, I'll be at Debt Fellowship Hour after church if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to answer them. Um, and just one more quick announcement because I see so many bright new shiny faces here. I'm very excited about. We did launch a new community group program last month um, that coincides with Pastor Jess's sabbatical just for us to start to get to know each other a little bit better outside of the Sunday uh, service context. So if you're new and that sounds fun, the groups have are about like eight, eight to 10 people or so. And the small groups um, just meet to do fun stuff. I know one group just did mini golf. Like I just met with my group at a park. We had a great time. We had bagels yesterday. Again, other groups I think have done dinner. So it's really just a fun way to meet a small group of people um, in the community. So if you're new to faith or new to state college and like wanna meet some people, you can email um, faithuccsc at gmail.com. If you like don't have a pen to write that down, it's just the main church website, um, a Gmail address, you can find that online. Or again, you can talk to me after service in the fellowship hour, I can get your contact information and we can get you set up in a group. So lots of fun stuff happening um, at church. Again, kayak next summer or next uh, Sunday. Um, I'm longing for summer. I'm like summer again. Next Sunday, um, we have then again community groups and again, the penguin pack. So lots, lots happening at faith. So, um, so again, contact me if you need any additional Any other announcements? Then let us join together in singing hymn number 349, the first three stanzas of I Come With Joy. <clears throat> You may be seated. Beloved in Christ, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men and women, youth and children come from the east and the west and the north and the south and gather about Christ's table. This table is open to everyone. You do not need to be a member of this congregation, but simply want to participate with everyone gathered here. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. At your call, creation was birthed out of chaos. And by your breath, the world and all things living came into being and continually are sustained. At your call, Moses led your people from slavery to freedom, and people of all ages, tongues, and races are brought from bondage to the day of promise. At your call, prophets and apostles recall people and nations from aimlessness and sin to the daylight of justice and righteousness, 
and you offer the world new ways to reconciliation and peace. In Christ, you became flesh of our flesh and dwelt among humankind, calling the world to always glimpse your glory. In Christ, you suffered the humiliation of the cross and triumphed in the resurrection, calling all people from the tombs of death to the garden of new life. Through the Holy Spirit, you call the church to faithful discipleship, summoning men and women, youth and children, to take up your cross and follow where Jesus leads. Through the Holy Spirit, you call ordinary people to mission and ministry, empowering them with the gifts to preach, to teach, and to heal in the name of Jesus Christ. Through the Holy Spirit, you touch people with sacred signs and seals, calling the world into a holiness that is a gift of God. With the church on earth and the church in communion with all the saints, we give our thanks and sing our praise. And bless these gifts of bread and wine that we offer you, offerings from your creation to feed us with the means of grace. May they become for us the body and blood of Christ, that here we may eat and drink with Christ and all the saints in glory. On that evening, as Jesus was gathered with his friends at the table, he took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, also, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. O oh God of love, on this day, we give thanks for the many ways that you show us our love and that we express that love in our lives through the ways that we interact with all those with whom we are in relationship. We give thanks for those that serve you in the church and in the world, expressing their love by their doing, by their actions, as they reach out. Especially this morning, we think of those and remember those who need your special healing. Those that may need healing in body, healing in spirit, and yes, even healing in some relationships. We ask that we, you may know their presence with them and be able to experience the love that comes from you. We think of those that this time of year are teaching children and the students that have come to our community to learn and to grow in wisdom 
and in knowledge. Bless them that they may flourish in this environment and become the kind of adults that will make intentional contributions to your world that you have created for us. We pray this day for those who mourn and especially for the family of Nancy Wolf and those that keep their loved ones in their hearts, but still miss them dearly. For all of your creation and for these changing seasons that we experience, we give thanks and offer all our prayers up to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And together may we pray as Jesus taught. Ever loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready. You are invited to come down the center aisle, receive the bread and the cup, and consume them immediately, and return by the side aisles to your seats. Come.
as we give thanks for all that God, all of God's gifts to us through our offerings this morning, we also give thanks for the gifts of Timothy McClure and his sharing of his great musical gifts with us today. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Now let us receive our morning offerings. <laughs> And now let us join in singing the last two stanzas of our communion hymn number 349. And now indeed may you go in joy with the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit within. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>